Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So let's talk about it. First of all, uh, the big headline of the day is China, United States, uh, apparently sized, uh, signed phase one. Okay, that was it. That was it. That was the, that was the global headline. More important, guys, again, it, we, we don't do these videos. Well, I don't do these videos. Uh, to talk about, you know, the macro events. Again, there's 3,000 websites. There's, you know, 200 million blogs. Uh, you can go on any one of them. They'll tell you exactly what happened uh, throughout the day. Again, we're, 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 we're speaking from the trader's point of view of what we're all looking at and what we think might happen uh, tomorrow and what we can do to not only uh, put ourselves in the position to thrive, but again, really protect our capital. So yesterday, again, I had a really funky day yesterday. I just, you know, lost some money yesterday. Um, but I noticed, I, I noticed something happening, and uh, I, I described it in the video as it felt like the mom and the, the, the mother and the father were staying together. Okay, we're really staying together. Uh, for the sake of the kids. And what I meant by that was everything was all great on the surface, um, but you could start seeing something called the buyer strike. Now, again, before you turn around and say, oh, God, this guy's calling for a bear market. No, sh you know, relax. Settle down. We've been on a linear run, right? We've been on a linear run. We all know gravity is real. We all know at some point the market is going to come back. Even, you know, even a small back test into rising support, you can see even going back to several months, anytime there is a big rally, there's always some sort of uh, areas of rest. So again, I'm not sitting here talking about Armageddon, the market's going to zero, Tesla's going to 300, oh, everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket. What we're talking about is a potential buyer strike. And when a buyer strike happens is when you have a linear move up, right, when you have a big, big linear move up, eventually the buyers get tired, right? They, they, they just cannot fathom chasing the same names over and over and over again. And all those, all those days that we had with big, big expansion channels, slowly but surely they're starting to get smaller and smaller and smaller and start to shrink. And eventually the buyers get gassed out and kind of take a step back and you know the bears come in pumping their chest and everything is so good. They get their two days worth of self and back to all time highs. I'm just being, you know, I'm just being sarcastic, but it, but that's what happens. And the problem is when you get a linear move upwards and a linear move downwards, this buyer strike to the upside and seller strike to the downside is very real. Okay. And what happens is most traders, you know, they can't identify this. Okay. They can't identify this because again, for them, well, it's just a rest day, right? What's the big deal? The market can't go up forever. The market can't go up every single day. It's a rest day. But if you've noticed what's been happening, the kind of the common denominator of what's been happening as the market's rising very, very aggressively, okay, even the days that we had rest days on the indexes, there were still powerful moves, very, very exaggerated moves and, you know, a number of stocks like a Tesla, uh, like a NVIDIA, like a Beyond, you know, stuff like that. And now we're starting to see the market, you know, pretty strong, right? Pretty strong. But now we're starting to see the names that were really aggressively going up. They're starting to kind of get a little bit calmer, right? Get a little bit calmer. They're starting to take a little profits off the table. You know, BYND came in today. Again, we talked about uh, BYND in last night's uh, video talking about, wow, there was an inverted hammer, right? Inverted hammer on uh, BYD, which was bearish. And then we had that, that PR that came out. I still don't even remember the company's name that they had the PR with. And then this morning, uh, they downgraded and took it right down to, you know, not quite, but right down to close to the five-day moving average. So again, the way it got there was a downgrade. But, but again, this has kind of set the tone of, ne of a negative tone. And again, all those coal buyers that were coming in on Tesla, right? All those coal, coal coming in. And again, they, they still could be right. But, but again... When you have such a magnificent run, and, and this is nothing short of a magnificent run, not only are you going to get buyer strike, right? Stocks are just you know, it's talking about, how can I possibly buy Tesla? It was 400 like three minutes ago. Now it's at 550. How can I possibly get, you know, how can I possibly get on this stock? 
And again, this is what's happening. And now you combine that with, well, we start seeing a little bit of technical damage today. We'll talk about, it was a very, very aggressive pivot towards the end of the day. Unfortunately, I logged off. Uh, I logged off, went to get my daughter from school, and I missed that whole move. But you can see, we'll talk about that in a second. You can see where its next support is going to line up, and I think it's going to get there. I still think there's another $10, $12 uh, on this pullback here. But the most important part is, again, even when we started seeing stocks make very, very aggressive moves, the moves today were very, very somber into strength, right? We talk, we're only going to talk about the strength. There was a lot of value today on uh, dip buys, okay? Uh, there was a lot of value today uh, on the short side when things confirmed, but there wasn't a lot of value. And this is very, very surprisingly, there wasn't a lot of value today on names, right? And again, keep this in mind, the NASDAQ Composite was up the whole day, right? Until they started selling off on this phase one news, but nothing moved, I mean, nothing was up. And you had, you know, had really, really aggressive potential setups. Like again, Netflix, we talked about, you know, right? Netflix, we talked about, and usually when you get a setup like this, right? It's, you get the top of the uh, supply zone right here, 341.40, right? 341, on, on a setup like this, if this market was really, really strong and the buyers were just kind of all over the place and just wanted, this thing would have been at 345 in a couple of minutes. And you can see here how, again, they just got up there, put up a 40, 50 cent move and they're like, Ugh, leave me alone. And the stock sold off. Same thing, for example, like on a square, right? So I took, just to give you an example, like I took square long this morning, right? I took long, and it went up like 30 cents, right? 30 cents, and then it came right back in. And then finally later, it got a little bit stronger. But again, you have such a long duration of a breakout. You're talking about Going back to November, November. I mean, we're we're in in January. Excuse me, November, December. You almost have three months of consolidation. Again, if this was a week ago, and you have such a long distribution channel, you're going to get a lot bigger move than sixty cents. So again, here is another and again example of uh, people are getting tired. Now again, is there a move still to the upside? Yes, absolutely. Still very very strong. Uh, some option flow coming in on names that are very very strong. Like ZM, I think is going to have another big run uh, tomorrow. Like a stock like SDC that I I, I didn't even notice till today, but you know, really really big uh, call buying coming in on the 14s, the 16s. I even saw, but the stocks that I trade every single day, right? This you know the Teslas of the world, they're tired. The Netflix can't follow through. Amazon again, it's in its own personal hell. You guys remember? You guys remember like four or five days ago, and I said, you know, this is my last day. I'm done. We took a modest profit in, in, in uh, Amazon, like four or five bucks on a four-day hold of all things. And I said, I'm done with this thing. I mean, how long could it possibly have to, 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 to finally move? And, you know, again, it didn't. And the stock two days later goes all the way down uh, 35, 40 points. So, again, something's wrong with these things. Again, call it a buyer strike. Call it the market just needs a break. Call it whatever you want. But, again, our job as traders is to adjust to what we're seeing. So, for example, tomorrow, I know the market's tired. Right, I can see by the stocks that we trade. So the value tomorrow, at least on beta, right, at least on beta, is neutral to negative. You have to. How can you again? How can you show any evidence of market bias, at least for the short term? Okay, and again, it's nothing to do with the Qs, the spies, the, or anything in between. Just the names that I trade. Again, Amazon's weak. What's going to get it higher? Again, granted, uh, really good size buyers came in on a dip today for the nineteen hundred. Uh, February uh, calls that it's going to cover their earnings. I get it. People are positioning for earnings. But but again, when a Netflix can't rally out of a very good two-day, 60-minute range, only goes up 50 cents or so, that's a sign to kind of, you know, that's a sign to kind of scale back and start looking not necessarily at other things, but I have. I started looking at other things. Um, but, you know, trying to take advantage of those other instruments into rising dip buys. Again, we talked about, for example, we talked about the pot stocks for a couple of days. I said, you know, I think you're going to have another stock, another run. And they had their run. You had that three-day run. And now, again, they look tired. Is this, you know, is this group ready for reversal coming into tomorrow? I, I think they are, right? I think they are. I think if they gap up tomorrow uh, and go into supply and get rejected, yeah, I, I think they're going to start moving lower tomorrow. Again, you had a big run on TLRY, for example, from 15 to 22. This is day three. If they gap up day four into supply and get rejected, I think the whole group comes in. So there's going to be value. Is there's value tomorrow, for example, on Tesla? Absolutely. You got a 3,000 point run up in three weeks, right? 
Here's the rising, you know, rising five-day support, right? If you believe in the theory of stocks don't trade from supply to supply, demand to demand, then again, any gap up tomorrow on Tesla, this thing starts validating today's low and confirming there's another $10 in the trade. So again, there is value tomorrow. But again, what's good about a market like this, or I don't want to use the word good, but structure in a market like this, you could clearly see the strong players and you can see clearly the, the weak players, right? Very, very clean. And from the macro point of view, and this is kind of, what well, we start talking about the dreaded rounding top, right? If all you guys have been following my uh, video or been in the live webinar for me for almost you know over nine years, you kind of know what the rounding top is. A rounding top is an exhausted area of the market that buyers are tired; they don't want to commit anymore for anything real. Uh, they realize even the biggest macro bull or the perma bull, we need a rest, and you start seeing this kind of rounding top form at the top of the levels. And again, the craziest part about a rounding top or a potential rounding top, again, I don't like to paint anything into a corner, but this is at least what I'm seeing as examples of evidence that I'm, you know, I'm viewing for myself. Um, what we see is a rounding top usually means there will be strength and weakness in the same day. Okay. And a lot of people will get their accounts churned. If you don't properly identify what you're looking at, you will churn your account because one second Tesla's rallying, the next second it's selling off, and then you sell the bottom, and then you're covering the top, and then Netflix rotation, and Roku goes higher to get rejected. So you're going to get a lot of mixed messages. It's almost like an awkward first date, okay? Maybe she likes me, maybe she hates me. Does, she, does my breath smell? Am I tall enough for her? Do I drive a nicer car? Well, what is she doing right now for a living? Do I even like her? So there's been a lot of mixed messages for the next couple of days. And rounding tops, they don't form in one day. They, they form, tops, plural. They're, it's it's, it's a, about a four to five to six day event. And once you start seeing lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and especially we have to watch out uh, for this 219 and a half level on the queues. If that starts moving lower, then when the market's going to go lower. Again, again, I know it's crazy to hear. I know there's a lot of young kids in the room, but yeah, markets do go lower. Shh, don't tell anybody, but it's crazy. It's a very, it's a very secretive uh, you know, rule of, of tape. Gravity's real. So we're going to have to watch this pivot here and this macro pivot uh, going into the day tomorrow, this 19 and a half, or at least you know, going for the near future, uh, and try to pick out good spots, both longs, both shorts. Uh, don't commit to aggressive moves, okay? Do not uh, commit to aggressive moves. Uh, scalp, just scalp the market, use measure potential. And the most important thing is, uh, most important thing is um, just use cash flow. Use cash flow uh, both long and short. Um, you know, there's some pretty decent pivots today, okay? There were de de decent pivots in, in names that, uh, names that um, were kind of odd, right? Were kind of odd, like, um, you know, kind of odd, like an, um, like, like for example, like a, a OSPN and an APLS. Uh, but there was also pivots in Square. There was also pivots in, in Netflix. Uh, and this was the big one. This is the big one that really got pretty hammered here. Uh, 524 was the bottom channel. If it builds below, it can flush. And here's the levels: 518, 513, 505. And I logged off to get my daughter, and the stock got destroyed. Absolutely, it went down like six points or so, or eight points. Excuse me, eight points or so. So. Pretty big miss if you did catch it. Uh, great job by you. But the, the oddest trade of the day, for sure, okay, the oddest trade of the day was NIO. And usually, again, it's not something I would trade, but again, you know, I was looking at beta. I go, ah, it's not here, not there. And there was all this call buying coming in. You know, you had the the fours, the four, uh, the fours, the fives. I was like, all right, all right. So we're waiting for a dip on this thing. And I bought the, I mean, I'm talking about, I bought the dip perfectly. Like, like perfectly, like literally at the bottom of the range. I even tweeted this out. I said, hey, uh, 428, 430, if this thing holds this level, it's going to go back to the highs. And it went perfectly. It went perfectly. It literally went back to the highs. And it just, it, it my highest sale was literally within uh, a penny or so uh, right through the highs just, just because, again, it keeps on getting rejected here. And this is why we always talk about always make sales. You just never know what happens. And then next thing you know, the damn thing gets halted, right? Damn thing gets halted. And I'm like, oh, Okay, that's not good. And the one thing that saved this halt, if you saw the news, first of all, the speculation why it went up uh, was, was uh, speculation that they were going to get funding. Again, this is not Tesla. Okay? Don't tell me this is the, the next version of Tesla. It's not. Okay, they, they, they're strapped for cash. They need money. So there was a rumor going around that they got funding secured, right? Funding secured. Ah, oh, funding secured. A billion dollars, which is going to be a game changer. And then next thing you know, right, next thing you know, so um, I sold a good chunk of my position. Uh, I got a runner left and the damn thing, because you know, again, it just couldn't, and again, I'm not in the, in the praying business. 
it couldn't, it just could not get through this level. You know, one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. How many times can you give it, right? You gotta make some sales, you gotta lock in your money. And it gets halted, right? It gets halted. And um, we're waiting for the news, waiting for the news. And obviously, I'm not a schmuck. I know something gets halted in the middle of the day. That's never a good thing. And they came out with news basically saying that, yeah, you know, we're not any close to uh, getting anything deal done. And I said, oh, crap, the stock's going to go down. And again, in my mind, you're always thinking to yourself, the worst case scenario, oh, my God, they're going to open this damn thing up at 3, at 350, at 375. I'm going to get killed. And oh, my God, how could it happen? What's the chances? Here's what we had going for us, right? Here's what we had going for us. Number one, uh, NIO, uh, NIO, there was no materialistic news anyway to get this thing up. It was only speculation. So speculation cannot be sold as a material fact. It's just speculation. The way you, you're speculating a stock is going to get FDA approval. So that's what we had going for us. Second of all, the, the stock trades with a specialist. A specialist's job is to maintain an orderly market. So there was no specific material news that really had the stock being halted. So there was absolutely no reason, at least in my, in my, in my thought process, there was absolutely no reason for them to kill the stock. Again, remember, when the stock gets first halted, I'm thinking worst case scenario. When I finally see what the news is or a lack of news is all speculation. And I even said this in a live webinar. I said, they're probably going to open up this thing. And again, I was had my fingers and toes and uh, everything in between crossed. But I said, there's a chance because there's a specialist and he has to keep an orderly market because there's not fresh materialistic news. I wouldn't be surprised if they opened it up anywhere between the 20s and 30s. And if that was the case, you know what? If I could take break even on the balance or up a little bit, that would be fine. Okay. They open up the damn thing. Okay. They open up the damn thing. It exactly what, I mean, literally maybe three, four cents away from the, from the halt. Obviously I start hitting bids. I get out of the damn thing in the, in the mid thirties, which was fine. I just wanted out. Um, and it went all the way down to 406. Again, where we got lucky, okay, where we got really, really lucky was if this news, right, this news came out after the close and the specialist is not maintaining a fair and orderly market, which is his job, we would have been having this conversation with 375, 350. So just yesterday when I said, oh my God, I felt like I was in a prison scene with BYND. How could I be so unlucky, right? The market guys, and I said this yesterday, how can, you know, the market guys, will kind of make you whole, you know, it'll even you out. It'll, give, it'll make you some crazy stuff throughout your journey and then it'll save you along the way. So today was a perfect example. We got saved because again, if this happened after hours, we would have been having this conversation probably 75 cents to a dollar lower. So thank God for small things. So going into uh, tomorrow, guys, let me give you guys some ideas. I, I do like, um, I do like these uh, pot stocks. If they gap up, right. If they gap up and, um, and they get stuffed at supply. If they start going green to red, I will be looking for channels to take advantage to the downside. Um, I, I like, you know, I, I like this, um, I like the ZM. You know, I like the ZM, Zoom. I actually use uh, for our live webinar. I, I use uh, Zoom uh, as our, our, our interface. Is, there, is it a coincidence the stock is getting stronger? Just saying, switch to it, it's getting stronger. Uh, really aggressive call buying, really, really aggressive call buying that came in all out of the money, all out of the money. The highest I think I saw it was like 85. So I'm definitely watching uh, that for tomorrow. Uh, let me see what else. Let me see what else I want to talk about for tomorrow's session. Um, I kind of like this SDC. Again, I don't know what this thing is, but I, I want to continue to look at this thing on dips. Um, I want to see it on dips. It looks like a recent IPO. If we can get a good washout tomorrow, uh, I'd like to pick some up off the 60-minute channel, or if it starts confirming this $14 area, maybe it goes higher uh, as well. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. Please get to morning strategy early tomorrow for BYND and Tesla and everything else in between just to see if we have uh, any edge there at all tomorrow. Because, again, rounding tops make things a tad you know, a tad uneasy, so we have to be a little more, uh, a little bit more selective. Obviously, I think dip buys into into support is me much more important tomorrow than buying into strength. Again, if this is how I see going into tomorrow, you're gonna have to see the same thing. Buying into strength, not the way to go. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault 
where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.